Hey guys, what's going on? Originally, I was gonna make a video about, you know, the popular claim that uh, unhealthy food is more expensive than healthy, no, less expensive than healthy food, so it's hard for poor people to eat healthy. Um, I was gonna debunk that because it's really, really easy using this magical thing that I know I talk about a lot that people don't like called stats, and we can make a chart. Um, but then Kyle, what's his name, Wittenhouse? Kyle Rittenhouse happened a couple days ago, and I'm like, even though everyone is talking about it, how could I not talk about that? That is so infinitely more important than whether you can buy unhealthy food or healthy food on a budget, like, or whatever the exact title is going to be. So that's going to have to wait. We're going to talk about this Chad, this 17-year-old kid who uh, lit up three commies and killed two of them. So many people have been saying that this was bound to happen. I haven't been the only one. I'm not going to take credit for, I was the only one who predicted this. You know, countless YouTubers have said that these riots are continuing and continuing. They're popping up in places that they haven't before that are used to very quiet rural or semi-rural, semi-suburban lifestyles. Uh, Kenosha, the population of, this, of the thing... Uh, the city proper, I think, is only 100,000. I think the county in total is 160,000. That's not a lot of people. It's not rural, rural by any means, obviously. Super fly. They killed that fruit fly, I swear to God. Um, but it's not like a city city, like what's been happening in riots, like Minneapolis, for example, is infinitely more bigger than that city. These protesters are going to all of these places where these people mind their own business, they have a fuck ton of guns, they know how to use them, and there's little to no crime, they don't put up with this shit. They don't put up with, oh yeah, there was a, a stabbing down the street and a shooting the other week, you know, how in New York City or Chicago, and it just happens every week, everyone's like, yeah, it's fine, can't do anything about it. They don't, they don't tolerate that shit in most of the country. These, there's so many things to unpack. That it, It's interesting how politics work that a single thing, a 17 year old shooting three people, somehow you can talk about it 20 different layers. One, what's very annoying is that the media is continuously ignoring the fact that these uh, rioters are in fact rioters. They call them peaceful protests. You saw the uh, link from CNN, fiery, but mostly peaceful protests. I'm like, darn. Drogon in Game of Thrones, fiery, but mostly peaceful. Like, it, that's a thing now? Mostly peaceful? So if it's 49% violent and 51% peaceful, then it's mostly peaceful, so it's okay, so it's no big deal. Um, they have been denying that these people are rioters and thugs and, Mar and Marxists and racists, uh, whatever you want to call them. They're all four of them. Black Lives Matter are racist, Marxist, violent thugs. There's no way around it. There, that's a whole separate video of, I, I don't know how mu much more evidence you need to... Um, to believe that. I don't know how you've been seeing all the footage everyone has been seeing. That's a thing, not everyone's been seeing. The, the footage that a lot of people have been seeing since May. You know, 32 plus people dead, close to a billion dollars in damages, whole blocks of cities decimated, 900 police officers either uh, wounded or dead. I think only a couple of them are dead, most of them are wounded. Um, thousands more other innocent people wounded, um, and then the 32 dead. 32 dead, like I mentioned, and you just be like, yep, this is just, it's mostly peaceful. It's just a handful of bad people, and but mostly it's okay. Really, so it's mostly okay when it's like 20 or 30 plus cities being engulfed in flames for like three months now. And remember what I mentioned how when I said everyone's seeing this? The problem is not everyone is seeing this. The vast majority of people, unfortunately, still get their news from mainstream media, either on TV or on the internet. And the media knows that. The media is like, how do we get these people to not see how violent these people are? Well, what we can do is just never fucking mention it, ever. And when they do, they do some half ass thing like fiery, but mostly peaceful. Or it started peaceful for a couple of hours, but then it's uh, descended into violence only when these few bad apples showed up. Oh. You don't know how riots work. They gather for a while and they plan stuff. So they're peaceful during their violent planning phase and then they attack. That's how these things work. It doesn't count. Oh, the gunman, he showed up at the office for a couple hours and didn't do anything. 
And then he started firing and killed a bunch of people. But so he, it started off peaceful. So it's fine, right? I mean, the semantics and the language they are using in order to cover up this shit is just saying it's Orwellian is like cliche at this point. It's just they're making a mockery and an insult of the English language. And they do that on purpose. They subvert terms of words that everyone up until, you know, relatively recently knew what these words meant, but when they use them in different contexts, and they only use them in this different context, then they subconsciously change people's minds as to what these words mean. And I know you, th I know you think that's a crazy conspiracy theorist. I know it is. I know, you, I know, I know that's what it sounds like. But look up Yuri Bezimov's, I think that's how you saw his last name, Sargon did a lot of video, lots of people doing videos on him. Actually, the new Call of Duty trailer had him in it. Very uh, telling of our times that a video game actually has a lot of truth in its trailer and triggered a bunch of leftists. So <laughs> that's, that's a crazy world we live in where Call of Duty, one of the most mainstream, modernized video game franchise, actually does something red pill for once. But we're getting off topic. I'm talking for like almost uh, seven minutes now. We haven't even talked about poor little Cal. Cal. That Jew from South Park, he just killed people. Okay, anyway. Um, they do this on purpose. So back to the original point. A lots of people have not seen how violent these protests are, how widespread they are, how it's not just a few bad apples, what their goals are. They're like, oh, what's Black Lives Matter? Oh, there's there's a couple of violence every now and then, but really they just want racial um, racial equality. They just want to end police brutality. But no, they don't. As you've seen in my past four videos talking Black Lives Matter. They absolutely do not want that. Again, I've already done four videos, like close to an hour's worth of footage. I'm not going to go into what they want. But the problem is that millions of Americans do not know what they actually want. So back to the original point. These protests have been going on for quite some time. They pop up in places where people don't tolerate that shit. They have guns. Um, and this is just, a, just an example. You know, it's just a relatively small area. Due to a completely justified police shooting, Black Lives Matter riots like unhinged uh, lunatics. I was about to say buffoons, but then you think they might see baboons, so I'm complaining black people with baboons, so it's racist, so I can't do that. So lunatics. Um, just, they only, I mean, how many times, everything I say is such a cliche at this point, because it's the same thing over and over again. They don't view any circumstantial evidence when it comes to making a judgment about anything. It's just the race of the people involved. So, white cop shooting a black guy, automatically bad, let's just go torch things and stab people. So they did that for a couple of nights, and then the business uh, business owners were like, we are tired of our business being torched, people getting beat up in the street, our cars being destroyed. So lots of uh, militiamen came out to help, including Kyle. And people say. Kyle went from out of state. He's, this isn't his community. What's he doing way over there for? He's in Illinois and this is in Wisconsin. What the fuck? Okay. I hate to like teach you like elementary level ge geography, but when you live hypothetically one mile over the border of Wisconsin and Illinois and then you cross two miles into Wisconsin, you're crossing the border but you've only been going for three miles, so it's still your area. That's still in your vicinity. I cannot believe I have to explain that to people. I don't know the exact mileage, so don't quote me on that. Don't say, he said, oh, Kyle only lived three miles away. This is an example. I think he lived 20 to 30 minutes away. So a couple of dozen miles or so, maybe two dozen miles. You can drive pretty fast on those little roads. Regardless, it, it's in his vicinity. It is completely logical for someone, if a problem pop, pops up in Kenosha, and he's 20 to 30 minutes away, that's your concern. If something pops up, uh, I don't know, if you live in, like, someplace in Maryland, and something pops off in D.C. or Baltimore, no, let's, let's say D.C. goes across borders, that's still in your vicinity. There is lots of Maryland that is very close to D.C., okay? So it makes sense that when he hears about militia people being called up to defend businesses, that he would go. And we have footage again of him cleaning graffiti hours before uh, the shootings happened, so when it was still daylight, he was doing that. 
if he wanted to go and just kill people like he was a terrorist, how the left-wing media is describing him, then why would he bother um, cleaning graffiti? If he wanted to mass murder people, he could have killed way more people with an AR with a 30-round mag, okay? It's very easy. There were a ton of people there. He could have killed them easily, but he only killed in self-defense. He only shot at the three. He may have shot... No, I think he only shot three. Because it was two killed, one wounded. He only shot at the three people who were, like, directly doing direct harm to him. So all of their narratives completely fall apart. Now, do I think it's irresponsible for a 17-year-old to be able to travel by himself in the middle of the night um, with a rifle? Yes. But, again, I don't know Wisconsin law specifically. I think, still, that is against the law. I think you still have to be 18 to have a rifle. I have seen other things saying that you have to be 18 to buy one, but you can be, like, maybe 16 or 17 and have one in your possession. But I don't think that was true. I still have to verify. I still have to look it up. So, regardless of whether he broke the law or not when it comes to having a rifle, that doesn't nothing to do with the fact of whether he shot in self-defense or not. You hear stories all the time about, like, kids home alone, like an 11-year-old and a 6-year-old, and some guy breaks into the house, and the son runs and gets the dad's rifle and shoots the uh, intruder in self-defense, saving him and his younger siblings. That happens dozens, if not hundreds of times throughout this country. And I know you're going to be like, I never heard that on CNN. What the fuck are you talking about, Robert? Google. Just Google. Just Google. Even Google can't censor those results. You may have to look up it, because they've been censoring like, motherfucker, it's so fucking irritating when it... I'm trying to look up a piece of information that, like, I know I've looked up before, but I'm not sure exactly what it is, so I want to verify it. And it takes me, like, 20 minutes of searching through, like, pages and pages and pages. I'm like, I found this with ease five years ago, and now all of a sudden it's, it's really, really difficult for me to find it. Hmm, what a coincidence, a coincidence. Putting off point here. Regardless, that happens all the time in this country. The police don't say, what this, What was this 11-year-old doing with access to a foreigner? He's like, um, you acted in self-defense, so it's it's fine. Like, they're not going to grill an 11-year-old or grill the parents because plenty of parents allow their kids access to guns um, when they're minors. Now, you may disagree with that or not, but that's beside the point. The fact is that many people do that, and it has saved a lot of lives. Mostly in the rural areas where police is like two sheriffs like 50 miles away so kids need to know how to use guns for themselves not only against criminals but usually against animals like it's common in rural areas for minors to know how to use a gun and where to get it if they need to do it so this is the same situation just a little different in my opinion yes technically he was breaking the law it doesn't change the fact that he was morally right to do what he did an interesting note that the three people he shot, one was a pedophile, two was a wife beater, and the third was a felon who had a handgun illegally. So, like, I know it's hashtag not all Black Lives Matter protesters. I know some of them are not criminals and uh, haven't broken the law and don't have a rap sheet, but what are the odds that the three people he happened to shoot happened to be, like, really, really bad people? I'm sure that's just a coincidence that doesn't speak to the character of the majority of these people involved or the stereotypical Black Lives Matter thug. Uh, that doesn't speak to that at all. Just It's just another coincidence that you can't link together to form opinions by. I've been seeing uh, uh, pedophile wood chipper memes for like months now, ever since uh, the whole Hollywood, you know, it being exposed even more than what people already knew uh, as like a pedophile ring giant pedophile ring and then this guy actually goes and does it and then people are like where's his uh innocent before proven guilty you can't just kill people because they've done crimes oh well really so you just think pedophiles are just a little slap on the wrist like oh a little little probation you're on registry no big deal same thing with jacob blake jacob blake had a rap sheet 10 miles long um including uh child rape and no one just seems like it's that's no big deal Oh, you're saying because he uh, had a pr had prior convictions, that's okay for the police to shoot him? No, but what I'm saying is I'm not going to feel bad when it happens. Um, the reason why he got shot is because he was reaching for a weapon in his car after wrestling with uh, police officers. That's why he got shot. I hate when people do that. When people, <laughs> I'm not saying that because he has prior convictions, he deserves to get shot. I'm saying that 
like I just said, it doesn't make me feel bad. It's like, oh, what, what a shame. It's like when a villain in some TV show or movie dies like a horrible, painful death, like or like a shitty way or like a backstabby way. It's just like, oh, that kind of fucking sucked. But like, you were a douchebag. You were so like, I'm not gonna feel bad about you. Like, come on. People are also making comparisons about Jacob Blake and Kyle Rittenson, Rittenhouse. Man, I can't pronounce his last name. I'm so bad with names. Um, like an unarmed black person got shot five, uh, seven times in the back. Uh, he didn't do anything, and then a uh, white guy shoots three people, and police just uh, peacefully arrest him. It's like there's stuff called context that is just utterly lacking when you make that comparison. Jacob Blake was not shot in the back seven times because he was black. He was shot seven times in the back because he was lunging into his car, reaching for a weapon, which they did, the DOJ did find that he had a knife in the driver's seat the, where, where the driver puts his feet, right where he was reaching. Wow, didn't see that one coming. And I heard, I saw so many liberals on Facebook saying, he didn't have a knife. What are you talking about? You're making shit up. You're trying to slander him. Wow, the DOJ said I was right. What a coincidence that I'm right and you're wrong again. I'm sorry to sound like I have a lot of hubris, but uh, just how many times can you be right in a row before you're like, okay, I think I know what I'm talking about. I'm not perfect and I do things, get things wrong. So I never say I get 100% of things right, but I'm just right time after time again, like really basic shit. Um, and um, continuing the analogy, Kyle didn't get not shot by police because he was white. It's because he, guess what, didn't attack officers and he surrendered peacefully. In fact, right after he shot the first guy, he booked it towards the police. He must have known where they were because he talked with them earlier. There's footage of him talking with the police officers. They gave him water. He, they asked, what you doing here? He's like, I'm part of the militia here to defend uh, the business. And they're like, cool, thanks for helping us out. So, like, he knew where they were. So, as soon as he shot the first guy, he started booking it. So, it's like, let them know what happened. Um, that's when he was attacked a second time. So, that's why he didn't get shot. Because he was doing the right thing when after it happened. He's like, hey, officer, I did this thing. It's like when you shoot someone in self-defense in any other situation. You're like, hey, officers, uh, someone broke my house. I shot them. They're dead. Uh, just let you know, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the gun down and show up. Like, whatever, whatever. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. What a coincidence that the person who attacks officers and does everything wrong gets shot. And the person who does everything correct doesn't get shot. Wow. I just, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. What? How many coincidences can you see before there's like a pattern in the logic to the arguments I'm making? It's like, oh man, gee williker zippity doo dah, Batman, I can't believe that. So we're going to wrap this up. This again, like I mentioned in previous videos, this shows the two-tiered system we have in this country. This is what Black Lives Matters want. Black Lives Matter have uh, beaten the politicians and the police for, and the, therefore the politicians have beaten the police force into submission because they hamstring them by enforcing the law seemingly at all. That's why militiamen had to be out there defending business in the first place because the police couldn't do it. They wouldn't or they couldn't for whatever reason. Just like when we saw Black Lives Matter uh, thugs break down a gate in the St. Louis house, the, the very fancy one we saw like a month ago or however long ago it was, they broke down private property gate, busting into their property and threatening them. None of them got charged in anything. Perfectly fine for them to do that. The white couple branching firearms to defend their property, they got arrested and they got their firearms um, confiscated. Now, I know the charges won't stick, but the radical DA racist in St. Louis doesn't care. She is creating a two-tier system where these black people can just do whatever the fuck they want. Break down uh, private gates, burn businesses, stab people, beat up people, Burn, burn cars, blow up shit, and they're not arrested. And then when white people defend themselves, they are arrested immediately, like, suddenly the police just magically can do that. Suddenly the police can just swoop in really fast with all these resources and pick them up and arrest them for the high crime of defending themselves. But magically, with all these Black Lives Matter uh, thugs and uh, violent rioters, Oh, suddenly they just can't do anything. No, don't don't attack them whenever they're attacking uh, innocent bystanders. That's racist because that's going to up the stats of black people beginning arrested for violent crime. And we need them to be even white and black because any differences in arrest 
or convictions means that we have a racist, white supremacist, capitalist, patriarchy uh, justice system. So we have to let some black people go in order to bring that number down and arrest all the whites we can to bring it back up. So we have full equality, says the Orwellian communist, in a totally peaceful land. I love Big Brother. We are never at war with anything. It's in a totally calm voice, like it's not completely psychotic as fuck. But that's what they want. We see time and time again multiple examples of this happening. Who knows how many more times this has happened and the media hasn't, uh, the independent media hasn't picked it up or it wasn't filmed. But the fact that when I talked about this before and there were like four cases of white people defending themselves and they were getting charged with incitement or threatening or something, like they want to make it illegal for white people to defend themselves. That's what they want. They want black people to do whatever the fuck they want, and they want white people to be powerless to do anything about it. And this is another clear example of this. The police didn't go after all the people burning cars and burning buildings, but as soon as a white guy shot someone in self-defense, boom, they swooped in and, and picked him up, I think, less than 24 hours. What a coincidence. That's not just an outlier. It's not just one in, uh, incident by itself. There's no context or broader links with other instances in the past, like, they're all connected. You can see I'm really sarcastic through all this, because I'm really, really pissed off. Like, seeing my country devolve like this, and seeing millions of people cheer it on, radical leftists, as like, this is positive change for our country. I'm like, you are ruining our country, and you are so fucking brainwashed that you can't even realize that you're doing that. Because a lot of white people, they don't know what Black Lives Matter truly wants. 